You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Here is a complete video of a maker set from start to finish. If you want to skip ahead to specific points in the video, then check the description below for skip times. Enjoy! Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and we're on the next oven in our Easy Bake Oven series. And if you're not sure what that is, look at the description for a playlist. We went back all the way to 1964 to the first oven, and are working our way through the years here. This is the Real Meal Oven. Cooking fun with real food. And as you can see, there's pizza, nachos, macaroni and cheese, some sweet treats. It says no light bulb required. So they went to an oven that didn't need a light bulb. And there's also a real working timer. Let's take a look at the back of the box. All right, let's see what we can learn on the back of the box. Let's see a couple things. The symbols magically appear as oven goes from cold to hot. There's the power on indicator. This is your storage area for... It says pans and mixes, a warming compartment, and in the oven timer. So it beeps when cooking time is complete. That is cool. Now this actually came with mixes that we don't have. We got other mixes. And then two pans, the pan pusher, and this little purple measure scraper tool. But let's read what it says here. Cooking fun with real food. Make a meal from appetizer to dessert. Create delicious chocolate chip cookies, soft pretzels, and mouth-watering macaroni and cheese with the mixes inside. This unique product heats just like a kitchen oven and comes with a special thermal indicator. That must be the special thermal indicator. So you know when the oven is preheated. The real working timer tells you when cooking time is up. So there you go. Let me just uh, check out a few more panels on the box. All right, here is one side panel. I just want to show it to you because you can see two bowls of macaroni and cheese, two pizzas, cake, pretzels, cookies, nacho cheese dip. So that is one side. Let's take a look at the other side. All right, so here is the other side panel. Kind of the same here because it's a repeat of all the food, but they show the oven here. Make a meal from appetizer dessert. No light bulb required. So that's really it. So now let me take it out of the box and show you the oven. Okay, here we go. Everything is out of the box, and I preset my timer for one minute, so I want to hear what it sounds like. Now, the timer and the power are two separate things. See, it's not plugged in, so this light isn't on, but the timer works on batteries, so I'll show you that later. And then here's your pan pusher. It also has a little arrow where you're supposed to stop when you push the pan in, just like the other pan pushers. And then the pans are taller than normal Easy Bake pans, and I'll show you those later and compare them. And then here's a little scraper tool and spoon. And then I have instructions, but I had to print them. Oh, there you go, back again. So that's what the timer sounds like. Now we know when we're done cooking. And then here is the directions for the unit itself. I had to print these online and cut them. And it just shows you the different pieces and information about it. And here's where the batteries are, so I'll show you that on the oven itself. There's the arrow for the pan pusher, cooling and removing the pan. Now you can get this online, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And there was little recipe cards that came with it. Macaroni and cheese, soft pretzels, and then the chocolate chip cookies. Also, you can get that online. So what I want to do next is actually just uh, take the oven and show you a few close-ups of the different features. So here is a close-up of the timer. This is how we're going to set it for the minutes. See that? It's at three minutes, and then you start it. But you could also hit start again, and it backs down the time. So there's zero. And then down here is the storage area where you can put mixes. Under here is the battery compartment. Now, let me see if I can get in there. Hold on a second. All right, under here is the battery compartment. I opened that. There was two double A's in there, and I checked them, and they are in good shape, so and fully charged, so I don't have to replace the batteries on the unit. Let me go back around and show you another couple features here. All right, now, this is where you can put the pans in, and as you can see now, twice as wide as a regular oven, which means it looks like you could put two pans in here and push them both in inside. Now, there's no light inside because this works off of a different heating principle. Let me show you more on the front. Okay, I know it's a lot brighter than normal, but I wanted to show you all the way back. It says, hot interior surfaces, hot food, do not touch, warming chamber, not for cooking food. But look how far back it actually goes. So it's pretty big back there. Now let me show you this uh, temperature gauge on the front. All right, here is that temperature gauge I was uh, showing you. This uh, actually changed, supposed to change colors when the oven is hot. So I've turned it on. It's been a few minutes, so... I'm just going to record this now. I'll edit out all the time so that at least we can see what that change is like. Because after a while now, when I'm going to be cooking, it's just going to be totally hot. So let's check it out.
All right, I hope you're starting to get excited now because uh, the next thing would be to go over the recipe. So we've taken a look at the box and seen all the details of the oven. We've seen this heat up. We've seen the timer, batteries, all the different pieces. The last thing, which I think everybody's a little excited about, I am, is the recipes we're going to do. Well, I like the appetizer, main course, and dessert concept. So we're going to do that. Three recipes in one video. I'm going to make the sugar cookies first because that's my dessert so I can keep them and have them ready at the end. Then I will make the appetizer, which is the pretzels and cheese. And then for my main course, yes, this looks exciting. It is the real meal oven pasta with sauce. All right. And it looks like I've got Parmesan cheese, some kind of red sauce with a rotini noodle. Doesn't this look good? Well, I hope you're excited because I am. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. I am set. Remember, I'm going to do the sugar cookies. I'm not expecting mine to look as beautiful as the ones on their box. They never seem to be exactly like that. So always first it said, grease your pan. So I'm going to do that with a little butter here in my finger like I've done in the past. And that should be adequate enough. I kind of like real butter, but better than the sprays. But sometimes I use the sprays. Okay. The sprays just seem to get everywhere. You know, you spray it and it gets all over the place. There's the pans. And then on the mix now, we don't need everything here. This is the, well, here's the cookie mix. I'll set that here. Pretzel glaze, pretzel mix, cheese dip, and coarse salt. That all goes for step two. We'll need the sprinkles, but I'll just set them out of, out of the way here. And here's where we're starting. It says... Place the contents of cookie mix packet into a mixing bowl, add half a teaspoon of water, and mix with a spoon. Okay. Cutting that off. Here we go. And a half a teaspoon. Now this one here says one tablespoon, half a teaspoon. TSP. Okay, good. All right. Doesn't seem like a lot of water, so we'll just uh, play it by ear, huh? Never seems like enough water, does it? Now it said, let me just see here. It said drop dough in small amounts, okay. And it makes eight total cookies. And it said press dough against side of the mixing bowl until it all clings together. And you see we're starting to get in, getting some clean here. I'm going to go a little bit longer. Is it clinging together? I would say so. It's pretty clingy. Look at that. Clingy enough? So now I need to make balls, huh? Or just drop dough into small amounts on each of the two cooking pans, all right? Enough to make four cookies per pan, all right? I'm just gonna take them over here and kinda make little balls here, drop them down. There's one. There's two. I guess they are sugar cookies, so they're a little dry. There's three. And four. I'm guessing these are going to come out shaped pretty funny, huh? Here's what I have left. I'm just kind of taking it and kneading it a little bit more off to the side, just so that it seems to uh, clings together 
There's three. And that's what I have left. Enough for maybe... Make, I can add a little bit more to another cookie, maybe. And there's four. Okay. Let me add a little bit more to this one. So four in each pan. Wow, it's really crumbly. Let's see if I can get those sprinkles to stay. I'm cut off the corner here. Grab a little bowl and put them in that. All right. Let's see if I can flatten them a little. Here we go. And they don't want to stay. Let me flatten them a little bit more. Hopefully they'll bake up just fine. That's what I'll do. I'll just press it on. Oh yeah, it looks like they're gonna all meld into one cookie when I bake them. Okay, looks like a nice mess. All right, let me set up and put them in the oven. All right, so the oven is good and hot. You can kind of see the little red gauge here. See it on the side here, it's red. And now I can put in two pans at one time. So here we go. Go right to the arrow. You hear the door drop, and then there is number two. All right, so let me set the timer. All right, so it's 15 minutes, here we go. Close. And when you're set, hit the start button. Now this oven has a section here where you can pull out the trays when they're on there and move them out a little bit. So we'll check back uh, when it's close to finishing. All right, we're down to the last minute here and I get to push them out of the oven. So let me uh, reset and get in a better position. I just wanted to show you, oh, there it is. I'll be right back. All right, so here I go. I had to do a little switch there to get some room here. It's a much bigger oven than the other ovens. Now they sure looked funny going in, so we'll see what they look like. Not expecting them to be that good looking. And then this slides out so you can actually move it a little. Oh, well there you go. Not the best looking cookies we've ever made, but let's move on to the next recipe. Okay, here we go, it is pretzel time. Now I've made the pretzels in the past, it's been a while. So let me just get started by taking care of the pans. I had to move the cookies out of my pans, put them on a plate so they're ready, and boy, they, they look uh, unique. All right, so those are set. Now let's see, pour contents of pretzel mix. Okay, so I have that set up right here. My scissors are not handy. I will just rip the pack here. Okay, pour, uh, and then five teaspoons of water. Okay. Where's my teaspoon? Right over here, and my water. Let's move it to this side. One. Three. Four. Five teaspoons. Okay, there we go. And then, um... Uh, Okay, so just mix it and then I have to knead it at some point, so. So knead mixture until dough clings together. All right, so let me just get this mixed and then I'll move it. They show it actually on a surface, like my cutting board here will work good. Then you divide it in half because I'm making two pretzels, one for each pan. So how many of you are liking the real meal oven so far and understand its principles and how it works and having the timer and the, the gauge on it to control the temperature? Alright, I'm going to get some flour here. 
which I had off to the side. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's easier than using that little bowl. But it would help if I had a better camera shot there. There we go. There, I just want to get it all nice and mixed here. Okay, so let me just read ahead while I do this here. Okay, knead mixture until dough clings together. I think we're close on that. Divide dough in half. So I think we've got it clung together now. Prepare a clean surface and sprinkle it with flour. Well, we started that already. Also sprinkle your hands with flour. Okay. It says roll out two strips of dough, each about 10 inches long. Fold each strip into a pretzel shape as, so, as shown in the picture. I'm going to need it just a little bit more. So it looks like I can roll it, but it still seems a little crumbly in spots. Doesn't it? Just a little. Okay, so two strips of dough, 10 inches. That's probably about yay long. Hmm. You don't want to roll out, do you? I'll just keep going. Roll and stretch, roll and stretch. Is that 10 inches? I don't think so. I'm trying to do it so it doesn't break. I would say that's pretty close. Probably a 10 inch cutting board, so we'll go till that reaches the ends. Okay, I think I like that. So we're greased and ready. So you twist this over. And this over. Then pinch them here. Come on, stay together. There we go. There's one. Okay. Hey, no one said they would be perfect pretzels. This one wants to break apart right here. So guess what? That'll save me some work. This one feels a little doughier too. See that? Okay. And then make another pretzel. Now let's do this one out here. So it's kind of like this one under it over. I'm looking at their picture here. And then this, that's a twisty. Oh, I broke my twisty pretzel. That's a unique looking pretzel. I'm keeping it. Okay. Then it says uh, the glaze. So, dough is done. Step four. Oh, so it says, uh, in the, gently press, place pretzel shapes in the cooking pans. Step four, pour contents of pretzel glaze mix into mixing bowls. So, that's why I had two bowls here. This is going to be a weird color. I remember from the last time I made it. And then add two teaspoons of water. One. Two. And mix it up.
Wow, this is a three recipe video. I'm actually looking forward to the pasta the most. I don't know why. It looks like the, the only thing that I've never done before is something like that. Okay. Stir well with spoon. Apply a small amount of the pretzel glaze to the, over the top and sides of the pretzels with a spoon. Hmm. Okay. The spoon. Look at this pretzel, man. That's ugly. It'll be pretty when it's all cooked and ready. I'll just go around here and then I'll take my... This is probably what's going to make it look brown. Okay. Then I'll use this side to coat it all. I almost want to use a brush. Paint it all pretty like. Okay. Let's uh, spread that one around a little bit. Now, who likes a lot of salt on their pretzel? I do. That's the last step before we put them in the oven. Okay. Now, it said a small amount of pretzel glaze. I don't know how you can do that. It's a nice thin layer around the sides and covering the pretzel. A brush would have been much better. Okay, then it says sprinkle coarse salt. Here we go. Ooh, look at all that salt. Okay, so that's it. My pretzels are ready. Hey, they look okay. So let me get them in the oven. All right, so the real meal oven is still hot. The indicator still shows it. I haven't turned it off, so it's it's cooking. Let's get these in here. You can hear that door close. And then it says set the timer for, oh, I'm not ready for that, 18 minutes. Let's do that. I really do think the timer is the best thing on this oven. Let me see if I hold it up, it'll go up. Nope. Okay, we'll check them when they're done. All right, so I have some time. It's still in the background. It is at flashing 15 minutes, so it hasn't been long. I washed my two bowls. So I wanted to go over the light bulb baking book. Remember this book? A History of the Easy Bake Oven by Todd Coopy. And uh, I wanted to just look at the Easy Bake Real Meal Oven from 2003. So it says, for the Easy Bake Oven's 40th anniversary, Hasbro released the first model that featured a heating element instead of a light bulb as a heat source. Originally called the Master Chef Oven, oven but never released under this name the real meal oven was the largest easy bake oven to date and i have to agree with that because it uh much bigger than what we've had in here before and then here's the colors the price uh the timer and then powered by a heating element the easy bake real meal oven was parenting magazine's 2003 toy of the year okay a little bit of history there for you you can read that if you want I'll just leave it, pause it, and enlarge it. There you go. Cool book for reference. And then here is the real meal packet. And I thought for the uh, pasta with sauce. I just wanted to take a quick look at it while we had some time. Love the foil pack, actually. There's the back. Pasta noodles, pasta sauce, pasta cheese. Now that's scary. Here we go. A little brochure. Easy Bake. Easybake.com. Okay. I think we even have that oven. There it is. Look at all the stuff. Pasta sauce, macaroni and cheese, pizza, nacho cheese, french fries, and cheese dip. That looks interesting. Soft pretzels, cookie sandwiches, cinnamon rolls. Ooh, lots of cool stuff. I've seen the Pop-Tart mix. Uh, we've had this one, 
Don't have the little brats. Now we have the little brats oven, but not that cookie set. Scooby Doo, that's different than the one we did. And then My Little Pony, look. Sing along birthday cake. Neat little pamphlet. Okay, hmm. Pasta cheese. Let's see what we get in this mix here. I'm not going to start it just yet because I want to just go through the stuff here. So you get a pasta noodle. Two bags of pasta noodles. Okay. And then a pasta sauce and a pasta cheese. So I wonder if you have to do this in steps. Okay, wash all pans, bowls, and utensils. I did all that. Dry all parts. Make sure children wash their hands. Got it. Two mixes, one cheese, one pasta. You also need the real meal oven utensils. Got them. Nonstick cooking spray, measuring spoons, measuring cup, mixing bowls, and ketchup. Ah, this uses ketchup. Kind of like a, the Chuck E. Cheese pizza that we did. Before making recipes, preheat the oven. That's good. All set. After making recipes, don't need to worry about that. So spray pan with cooking spray. Pour contents of one pasta packet into cooking pad, pan. Add a quarter cup of warm water. Spread pasta evenly. So one packet, one thing. Place pan in oven. Make sure both metal oven doors are closed. Set timer for 11 minutes and press start. When cooking time is complete, push pan into cooling chamber for 10 minutes. All right. Pour half the contents of the pasta sauce packet in the mixing bowl. Add one tablespoon of ketchup and stir. Pour half of the contents of cheese. I wonder if I could just make pastas in. Oh, remove pan from cooling chamber. Do not drain pasta. And then spread sauce on the cooked pasta. Pour cheese on top. Then you put it back in the oven for three minutes. When cooking time is complete, push pan in the cooling chamber. Let cool for ten minutes. Remove pan from uh, cooling chamber with spatula. I wonder if I could just do both since I have two. Now they show it going in the middle of the oven, but there's a slot there, so it's one side or the other. And this looks like an, like an older Easy Bake Oven dish here, warming dish. All right, well, I've got uh, 11 minutes on the timer, so we'll be back when the uh, timer goes off. It's down to one minute. The timer's about to go off here, so let me uh, make a quick adjustment for you so you can at least see them somewhat coming in and out there. Okay. And then let me push them through. My delectable pretzels. Okay. I can't see yet. I've got to move to that side here. Let me just pull them out. And slide them over just a little. And give you a better top-down look. So there you go. There's my glazed pretzels. All right, so now I need to get going on the pasta. Okay, I was reading, it did say, note, you can cook two pans at the same time. So, I'm gonna do it. Remember, here's the pasta noodle packs. And I have to eat my appetizer, because it said eat them when they're warm, so. Here we go, that's what the noodles look like. Does that look anything like the package? Does anything look like the package so far? There's my second one. And then it said a quarter cup of warm water in each. Now I have a half cup here, so I just gotta make sure I do this right. A little bit more. And spread evenly. Okay, there we go. Then it says, uh, at a quarter cup, okay, spread pasta evenly in pan. I did that. I thought I did that. And then place in the oven for 11 minutes. Let's do that. All right, here we go. Are you excited? Because I'm pretty excited to try something new here. Let's put this one here. This one here. Wow. It's going to be a lot of pasta here, huh? There's one. There's two. Let me set the timer. Here we go. That was the door on the inside. Jostle a little. Okay. We'll be back. Okay, I thought I'd give you a better perspective to see if we can 
get a better look at the pasta coming out. Uh, I have about a minute left, and uh, overall, pretty happy so far with my appetizer. The pretzel, you know, was what I expected from an Easy Bake pretzel. It's not something you get out of the mall, you know, out of a pretzel shop, of course. But you have to spend all that time making it and then baking it. It's something fun to eat. So uh, let's uh, let's just wait here. It's going to go off real soon. Other than that, I don't really have much more to say. Just uh, waiting for this last minute. Now, I'm at a weird angle here, so as soon as it goes off, I will push out the pasta. There you go. Okay, so the one on the left, and the one on the right, looks like I have enough room doing it this way. Okay, and then we'll see from a top-down perspective as I pull it out. They're hot, yes, they're very hot. Okay, there you go, my two pans of cooked pasta. So while that's cooling now, I gotta get the cheese and the sauce ready. All right, as you can see, the pasta is cooling down there. So uh, first things first is the pasta sauce. It was the pasta sauce. Remember, it was half, but I'm gonna do both here. And one tablespoon of ketchup. So I need two tablespoons of ketchup. This was like the other. Pe Ooh, that smells good. Looks like there's little flakes of seasoning in there also. So two tablespoons of ketchup. So hopefully it's not too runny. One. I gotta account for some extra sticking in there, right? Two. I'll use uh, yeah, I use my finger. Okay. Mmm, ketchup. You know why I use ketchup? Because a lot of kids like ketchup. It's a very recognizable flavor that kids are used to. There was a lot of questions the last time we made a pizza sauce and used ketchup, and that's the reason why. It's also something most people have in the house, you know, something available. I'm going to pour half of this on one and half on the other. Yep, it's kind of almost the exact same thing as the Chuck E. Cheese pizza mix. Okay, that looks good. Mmm, and the cheese now. The cheese pour half the contents, but we're gonna do all of it, and a half a teaspoon of hot water. So I gotta put a whole teaspoon in. Now, I don't know how the cheese on the cover looked, you know, like real cheese. This is a mushy cheese. So a half a teaspoon, so a whole teaspoon now. And I'll mix it with my ketchup one. Does it smell like cheese? It sure does. Okay. Our first real meal mix that we've done with pasta. Okay, so now I have those two done. Now I need to dump half on each. Let me get these out here. I don't expect them to be too hot. Ooh, it went back in. I'm not supposed to do that. Okay. Remove pan from cooling chamber. Do not drain pasta. Spread sauce on the cooked pasta. Pour cheese on top. Ooh, this is looking really good here. Who wants to dig in with me? Anybody out there want to dig in? Hey, 
Okay, I think that one got more sauce. Okay. Now the cheesy mixture. It said spread sauce on the cooked pasta, pour cheese on top. Oh man. I'm sure you're all dying to try this with me. Okay. Place pan back in oven. Let me get set up and do that. All right, so make sure both metal doors are closed after you push the pans in. Set timer for three minutes. Mmm, look at that. Barely fits. Might have to clean that up when I'm done. Here we go. In goes number one. And number two. All right, let's set the timer. All right. We'll check back in a few minutes. All right, the timer just went off. I missed it by hitting my record button too late. So here we go. There's one. There's two. I should be able to pull them out a little bit now so you can see where we're at. There is my hot, cheesy pasta. So when I come back, I think I'm going to add it to another little bowl and now have my three-course meal. All right, I am set. I moved my pasta to a little pasta pot. I have my last pretzel. My cheese is set up quite well, actually. And then I have my cookies over there. Let me just show you the cookies up close. You know, not the most uh, beautiful looking cookies, but it should top off the meal real nice. And then let me show you inside the pasta pot. It actually, you know what, came out pretty good. Get some pasta here. Hmm. Since I've already eaten my appetizer, I need to move right into the pasta course. I decided to eat it with a spoon. And it actually is, uh, it's, uh, Mushy. It's edible. That's a good thing. Yeah, a little bit more here. Oh, I wish I got something to drink. I didn't even think about something to drink. I should have used the Easy Bake Lemonade Maker. Maybe at the end we'll get more mixes and I can, you know, do that kind of... Well, all right. The only thing I haven't tried is a cookie. Oh, here, look at my cheese. Look how it's set up back here. It's thicker now. And it's spicy too. It's got a little bite to it. All right, cookie time. Hmm. I think out of everything, they taste the best. It's probably because they're sweet. But overall, I'm going to say, pretty successful. I think I need to find more of these mixes. And at the end, do just a baking and cooking festival, right? With all Easy Bake products. But we're not there yet. We've got about three or four more ovens. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process to get to this. And if you want to see other videos in this series, look at the description. Or as always, search our channel. And thanks everybody for sharing on social media. It really helps. And the thumbs up. It helps out Lucky Penny Shop. Really appreciate it. Later! If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up. Thanks for watching.